Thank you all so much for coming out today. My name is Rachel Lambert. I'm a program manager on the SharePoint team who works on modern page authoring. And I'm John Sanders. I'm also on the modern page authoring team. And we have a great set of demos for you today. As you've been seeing through the whole conference, uh, we've built our modern pages and our web parts, and those roll up to sites, and those sites get even more beautiful with home sites that we've announced this week. We are super fortunate to work with a great team from all over the world. We have team members in China, India, Norway, just to name a couple, and we're gonna get to demo some of their great work today. So I'm gonna talk us a little bit through history, and then Rachel is gonna come out and do some great demos, then I'll do some demos, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So, let's talk about the intelligent internet. You've been hearing about it all week, and the basis of that with Microsoft 365 is really in these three pillars. So we have communications, we have our knowledge sharing, and then business solutions. And at the center of all of that is a secure, simple, accessible, and inclusive system for delivering solutions to your customers. It's not only these things, but it's intelligent because today we have so much information. If we just tried to hand it all to you, you'd be constantly sifting through documents and document libraries and email. So we're trying to develop more and more ways to surface just the right things for you. And we'll show some of those today. And then the last pillar, which is super important for portals and for publishing or for the modern internet, is the extensibility pillar where we deliver quite a bit for you from Microsoft, but then we have a myriad of partners and developer experts and system integrators that extend that and make it even more beautiful. Because you might have line of business solutions, you might have custom solutions, we need to bring that all together. And where we bring that all together is with SharePoint. We also have other elements that tie in from Microsoft 365 within SharePoint, but at the basis of it are sites. And the building blocks of those sites are modern pages, which we're gonna talk about today, and SharePoint News. We have lots of other things that build those building blocks, and then we have other important Microsoft services like Yammer and Stream that tie in together to build that holistic, intelligent intranet. So with that, let's talk a little bit about where we came from. So in Ignite 2017, we started delivering and showcasing for you some web parts and a new modern authoring canvas. And that canvas, when it went live, it was one column. It worked great, it was simple to use, and it worked well for single page solutions. But since that time, and since those original 12 to 14 web parts, we now have over 40 web parts in our catalog, and again, those partners and your own development teams extend them in all the interesting ways to make pages even more valuable. Beyond those pages, of course, we've gone to multiple layouts in our, uh, in our page authoring canvas, communication sites, and as you heard on Tuesday, home sites. So let's talk a little bit about how we make the decisions that we make. One of those core pillars is based on user feedback. So we know that we have strategic initiatives to support, like you saw in home sites and with the vertical column. So the, some of those things we come up with ourselves as we talk with customers and figure out what's needed to make that intelligent intranet. But a lot of that comes from these sources, from our most valuable professionals, from user voice, or our vibrant tech community. I also usually try and follow this subreddit, and I'm uh, pretty good at responding to questions on Twitter as is all of our team. So if there's a question or a suggestion that you have, we'd love to see it on user voice, and we'd love to know that it's important to you with a tweet. So let's talk about user voice. Most recently, since 2018, we've, boom, delivered all of these capabilities for you. These were some of our top voted user voice requests in the portals and publishing or sites and in intelligent intranet area. So a simple one that was near and dear to my heart, the top one on the left there, was replacing the ugly 020s with dashes. That one just used to bother me so much, and obviously it bothered a thousand other people, so we took care of it. 
comment notifications. So now you can make notifications on pages, and those notifications aren't a tree falling in the woods. You actually know that that notification happened, and other people are aware so that you can have that social engagement around your pages. To pick a couple of other ones, one near and dear to developers is our Markdown support. So we created a Markdown web part that actually started with a Fix Hack Learn project for some of our own developers that were super excited about the idea of leveraging the power of Markdown and using the documentation that they normally write on GitHub and being able to copy that over to modern pages. Um, let's talk next about things that we're working on. You've heard about some of these already at the conference today. Communication sites at the root. Anyone excited about that feature? Yay! All right. So we're definitely working on that. Who went to DC's presentation on our multilingual solution coming out later this year? That's not very many people. You should definitely watch that. We've got a great video stream with him and with Julie talking about how we're going to deliver multilingual solutions for your intranet sites. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but I am going to demo a few of them, and Rachel's going to show off some more. Let's talk about ones where we need more feedback from you. So we've got two areas here. The left-hand side are things that we've said we're thinking about, and then on the right-hand side are things where we need more information. So I'll use a simple example from the more information. We think we've got a great pattern for opening pages, uh, opening links in modern pages, where within those modern pages, if it's within your environment, we open it in the same page. If it's an external thing, we open it in a new tab. You did help us find, however, some areas where we don't follow our own patterns. So we're going to stomp those out and fix them. But that's where, when we see a user voice request and we try and respond to it, we'd love to have some detailed comments in there. And you guys have done a great job of helping us with that, namely naming some of our web parts that certain linking, like events linked from quick links, open still in a new tab. And that's the kind of detail we love, because now it's actionable for us. I'm also going to point out the couple of things that we're trying to be very transparent on that aren't in our plans right now. So I've got them at the bottom left. Uh, recurring events and modern calendars. These are things that we know that you want, but right now with all the other things that we're working on, we're focused on these other areas. So go to user voice, let us know. I've got the link down on all those slides. And tell us what you need. And we'll be much better at listening to those. You might have noticed that in the last month or so, I've responded to a ton of these requests namely a number on the Boom It's Done slide that we even shipped months ago that I forgot to let you know. So I apologize for that, but we're going to be better about that. So let's go past user voice, because while proxies for direct user feedback are good, uh, namely MVPs, user voice Twitter, what we wanted to do is figure out a way to actually talk directly to page authors. So we implemented a system called Feature Promoter Score, where every 90 days, after you've published a page, we ask an author, what did they think about that experience? And they give it to us on a one to five scale. It looks like this. And most recently, we've actually added the bottom element, which is they can give us their email. And then if their feedback is something that we'd like to understand a little better, we can now reach back out to them. They don't have to enter their email. We don't enter it automatically for them. But if they want that engagement, we can engage with them. The really interesting thing is you see the box above the email. It's got the nice little pointer on it. 32% of people fill out verbatim feedback and give us actual commentary. So they say, hey, we liked your page authoring, but we'd love drag and drop to be better. Or I didn't know how to find or add a new section. So what we've done, uh, I'll show you a couple of examples of some of that feedback, is we've had an initiative run by Rachel and some of the things that she's going to demo for you focused on really simplifying that user Canvas experience and simplifying the discovery of new features and capabilities. So with that, let's bring Rachel out to talk to us and show us a great demo of our new simplified authoring experience. Hit five. five. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, John. So today I'm going to be demoing as Johanna Lorenz, an engineer at Contoso who's in charge of putting together a page to advertise an upcoming customer visit to Florence. So in order to get started, I'm going to go on my site and hit new page. And then I'm automatically taken into the page template picker. Page templates are a great way to accelerate your productivity as well as facilitate branding across your site. 
up at the top, we have our three Microsoft out of the box templates. You could choose your template up here and then see a preview of what your page will look like on the side. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with a custom template that my manager made. This template already has all the necessary information that she thinks engineers need to know before they sign up for an international trip. So once I preview the page to make sure it looks all right, I hit create page, and I'm started off with a page that already has a lot of the web parts that I need. So to get started, I'm gonna title my page for the Florence trip, and I'm going to change my image to one that fits the trip. I already have a picture that someone on my team took on the last trip there, so I'll go ahead and upload it and add it. You can use the image focus feature to change what part of the image shows up in the title region just to make sure it's centered correctly. So next, I wanna add a little bit more information on my page so that people know what they'll be getting into when they go on the trip. First, I'm gonna add a PowerPoint about travel logistics. When I open up my web part toolbox, I can search for the file viewer up here at the top, but I also have the option of fully expanding my toolbox and scrolling through all the different web parts this way to see what I need. So I'm going to select my file viewer and choose business trips best practices here and open it up. So that was pretty quick, but we also included a new faster way to add documents to your page. Instead of having to go through the file viewer, I can go ahead and upload, open my files here, pick the one I want, and drag and drop it onto the screen. So, yeah, your Canvas will know what kind of document it is. You can use this for PowerPoints like I did here. It also works for Word, Excel, and images open in an image uh, web part. So I did that for a single thing, but now it also works if you wanna do multiple files at once. So in this section, I wanna highlight some of our drone footage from past trips. I'm going to add a heading here and title it. And then open up my file picker again and pick multiple files. Right now I'm just doing two, but re really you can do as many as you need and drag and drop them onto the page and they upload right here. <laughs> So with our footage, we not only have images, but we also have a lot of great videos that we want to highlight. We have this one where our drone encountered a turtle that I really think will draw a lot of users to our page. I have it on stream. I can go ahead and copy my URL, and if I go and paste it into our text editor here, it'll auto-populate with a stream web part right away. And so even if I don't want the URL to show up, it, Afterwards, I can go back and delete it, and the web part will still be there. So moving forward, you might have noticed a couple new web parts on the page that you haven't seen before. The first one I want to call your attention to is our call to action button. This is a great way to bring your users' attention to links that you need to click on. You can use these to have links within the sites as well as externally, which you can add here. You can change the text that shows up on the button here, as well as change the alignment on your page. And these buttons will automatically take on the theme color of your site. Next, I want to draw your attention to our weather and world clock web parts. These are especially great for companies like Contoso who do a lot of international trips. In order to edit these, you just click on it and X out the ones you want. I'm going to go ahead and keep Las Vegas, since this is where Contoso is based out of, and start typing for Florence. And as you can see, it'll give me a bunch of suggestions. Yes, I want Florence, Tuscany and then the world clock works in a similar manner. So I go and delete it, and if I'm in a rush, I might actually delete more of the web part than I originally wanted to. I could go and type it and get it back pretty easily, but instead, I'm gonna go up to the top here and click our undo button and get it back right away. I can do it for that action. I can also click it again and get New York back, but since I don't really want New York on the page, I can go and have that action redone. And right now for the demo, I'm going up to the top of the page to click it just so it's easier to see. But if you want to, we also have our keyboard controls here. And this works not only for parts of web parts, but if I wanted to, I could delete a whole web part and get it back right away, or even an entire section. I could delete it and then realize I don't want it and get it right back. So I'm gonna go in and add Florence to our time and it'll automatically yeah, upload with the current time in Florence. The final web part that I wanna draw your attention to is our banner web part. 
This is a mashup of our call to action button as well as an image. This really draws your user's attention to the links you want them to click on, as well as makes your page more visually appealing. So you can go and edit the text right in the web part. So I'm gonna add in Florence. And then similar to the call to action button, you can change the link as well as the alignment and the text up here. And then you can also choose to change the background image if you want to. So moving forward, I'm gonna add some more relevant information. We have this text here to let me know what type of wording I should use, but I've already written up in a Word document all the information our users need to know about the trip. So I can go in and copy and paste it over to my SharePoint page, and it'll automatically keep all the formatting for my Word page, and I don't have to worry about redoing it. Cool. So finally, I'm going to go, I think I have all the information I need, but I wanna make my page a little bit more attractive. So I'm gonna go and edit my section, and I can change the section background to one of the theme colors. Now I think I'm gonna choose the dark one just to really highlight this information. And then I'm going to move these guys down just because I think it'll look a little bit better. I can drag and drop them here and move them down fairly quickly. So once I'm ready, once, I'm, once my page is ready, I can hit publish and it'll go out to my team. And here you can see the Save as Page Template button. This is how you create custom templates that'll go in your template picker. You can also retroactively go back to any page that you've already made before the feature and click this Promote button up here to also save it as a page template. So I think my new page is useful for my team, so I'll click this. I don't wanna add a new image, so I'll cancel out of that. And I'll name my template for Florence Trips. And you can also go back, if there's any information that you have on your page that you don't wanna show up in your page template, you can go ahead and edit it here so it won't show up. So just hit the Save Template button, and it should be good to go. So if I go back to my, the home side of my page and hit New Page, my Florence template will already be showing up in the template picker right away. So the final thing I wanna draw your attention to before John comes back on stage is we've added double linking in the hero web part. So beforehand you have these images that you can click on that will take you to these different articles, but we also added here at the bottom the option to share it on social media. So if you click here, for example the one that says discuss on Yammer, if you're logged in it should automatically take you to the Yammer feed where you can discuss it. So thanks for listening, now I'm gonna bring John back up to the stage to finish with the rest of the demos. Thank you, nice job. So what'd you guys think of undo redo? Maybe drag and drop stuff? All right, excellent. Okay, well let's talk about some of the other new features. One of the features that you saw on Tuesday, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo of creating and organizing your content. So we're gonna couple a couple of things there. One of them will be vertical columns that you've all seen on the new home site. And you might be wondering, is that a special thing that only works on home sites? Answer is no. It works on communication sites. It works on team sites too, because we know that sometimes you want denser content and you want to reflow it in different ways. So let's start with a quick demo of putting it onto a team site. All right. So right here, we've got a good-looking team site for the Mark 8 project. Uh, one of our designers built this beautiful site using a bunch of our web parts, which I have to say just looks fabulous. We've got the uh, countdown timer at the top, some events, a rich planner board where we can interact and work together. And then below that, we have both a single document and then access to the easy document library. And below that, a fabulous and powerful set of Yammer highlights, followed by a nice, rich Power BI dashboard. Exactly what you might expect to see on a vibrant team site. So below that, we also have activity happening in the team, and then finally, our news about the team. But that news is a little bit buried, so let's, let's edit this page, and then just like we would on any section, we'd come up and we'd add a new section, and in that section, we'd have a vertical column. So in that vertical column, often it's nice to differentiate it from the other content by having it shaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade the vertical column. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna start to move some parts over to that section. So I'll start with the countdown timer. We'll bring that over and drop it over. And then I think the events based on those compact cards are gonna look pretty good over there as well. So let's drop that. Planner really needs a little bit more real estate so that we can interact and work with the boards and engage, assign, et cetera. So I'm gonna leave that there. Same with the document libraries. Uh, but I think, yeah, Power BI, we definitely want that in the main space too. So it'd be a little weird to put into a one-third column size. But this activity is gonna look beautiful with compact cards. And similarly, news is gonna do the right thing and look fabulous over on the right-hand side. So now if we look at this site, we've got similar information. Let's go ahead and publish our new team site homepage. And what we've got here is we've got that big planner card that we can all interact with, or planner board, I should say, a nice countdown timer to remind us of the launch, and all those other elements. And then funny enough, we're gonna get asked whether we like page publishing because it's just about time for me to ask. So I think I'm gonna say that I really like it, but I'm gonna leave my address here so that we know that this Contoso demo is not something that we should be paying attention to the feedback on. But that's how we show when a page is authored how we ask customers about that FPS feedback. So with that, let's talk about some other elements of making content a little bit easier. I'm gonna switch off this team site to back to the uh, communication site that Rachel was using. And here on this home page, we've got a nice vibrant hero web part at the top, which I think she mentioned our own internal team uses to basically separate the links going to the content and then the links having the social discussion about the content, either in Yammer or uh, for external links into LinkedIn Elevate. But below that, we've got uh, this nice section here that you could imagine might look a little bit better, and I'm actually gonna go to full screen mode here, might look a little bit better uh, if we did a one-thirds, two-thirds swap for it. So what we would have to do before is I'd have to copy and paste and grab this content, and then if I wanted to reuse this Quick Links content, I'd have to rebuild Quick Links. But what we've done is we've added a duplicate button, and we've added that both on the section as well as on each web part. So if I click duplicate, we take all of that content and we add it to the page below. Nobody likes that? No excitement at all. All right. Uh, so we take duplicate, and then what you might imagine, maybe I'll duplicate it again. So I'm gonna drop that one more time, and then this middle one, I think I will switch that around, and I'll move the sections around a little bit. Maybe we'll change the layout here to be uh, facing the other way. Should get ourselves a better looking piece of content here. So now we've got essentially a nice two thirds content. Maybe this is the people web part or a collection of links, additional text, those same links. We've got a nice spacer so that it looks nice when we save it as a draft. And now we've got that different laid out content much faster than me manually creating all of those web parts uh, myself. Okay, next piece of content that we've heard, who uses highlighted content? I use it. Okay, not a lot of people. Wow, I would have expected more. Okay, great. Well, one of the things that we often get asked for in highlighted content is an ability to have sort of more knobs and dials. We like the simplicity of highlighted content. I'm just gonna create a new page that we can work on here. And I'm gonna add the highlighted content web part. And on this page, we're gonna give you a little bit more screen real estate here. Uh, I've got my settings for the highlighted content on the right, this property pane, and we've got the standard things that you might see on a number of our web parts, right? Data source, type of data. Down below that, we have filtering, uh, both single and more complex filtering, and then layouts. But one of the things that we often get asked for is, what if I wanted to control those ands and those ors, and I wanted a not statement? I wanted some of the stuff I used to have in content by search. So we talked about adding it as a bunch of new dip switches in this interface, and we thought it muddied it up a little bit. And when only a third or less than the room said that they use it now, we want to keep it simple, beautiful, and powerful. So what we've done is we've added a way that you can add your own custom query. 
It could leverage any of the metadata that you use in your site. You're essentially crafting your own KQL if you're going to search, or a CAMEL if you're going to target a specific list or library. So let's take a look at a not statement here. And let's just get documents that aren't from me. So I'll drop that into my page. You see I'm already set to this site. I'll drop that in the page and I'll apply it. And documents that used to be mine disappear, and now I see other users only. So a simple use of the not case. You could also, again, I just chose not to make a much more complicated query, but if you wanted to, you could have your ands and your ors and your grouping to exactly meet your business needs. One of the other common use cases for this inside Microsoft is we use quite a bit of uh, custom metadata to apply tags to different pieces of data. And so they'll apply those in an easy way within this advanced query box. OK. Next demo for you, similar to this, but a little bit different. Who has heard of connected web parts or dynamic data? OK, pretty good swath. All right. So I'm going to save this page, and I'm going to give you an example of a way that you could use dynamic data in your everyday life. So for this particular demo, what we did is we created a list. And in that list were names of videos with video links to our favorite videos from the 2018 SPCNA. And on the right-hand side, we added an embed part. And as I move through the list on the left, the correct video shows for me on the right-hand side. Excellent. So this is just a simple use, uh, or a simple example of how to do this. Let's go ahead and edit the page and see how easy that is. So I'm going to add a new section here so that we're not obviously editing the section I just made. And I guess I'll flip it around a little bit. And here I will add a list. And in that list, we're going to use our SPCNA videos. And then over to the right, we're going to add the embed part. Now, I think Rachel covered it, but one of the things our telemetry tells us is we don't make this search feature well enough discoverable. So we're going to work on that, because we just don't get as much search as we would think. We get a lot of scrolling. But I would like to highlight, you can search. And I know that she also showed you the large toolbox. So the way that we do this is we'd go out and get one embed video from uh, your source for video. In this case, it happens to be YouTube, because all these videos are public. Uh, you could also use Stream as an example, if you didn't want to use the beautiful Stream carousel. And then in the embed, I paste the link to the video. But within that link, the special value for this video is this video URL, or essentially a GUID for the video. So I'm going to replace that, and I'm going to use some simple syntax to do that. But first, I need to connect my video source. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to connect to a source. And then I'm going to pick my SPCNA video list. And then I'm going to come over here. Once I've connected that, if I use my uh, special syntax to pull up the elements of the list, I get the list fields. And what I want is the video link field, which is where I've stored the videos. So now as I move through this list and I click through it, unless I picked the wrong list because I didn't test the two lists on the same page, my bad for that. Let's get rid of that. And we'll reconnect our source. Look, there's only one, just what you'd want. So we'll paste that link in. Again, I'll replace the one element in the video that I need to have be dynamic. That's going to pull up my list picker for the list I've connected to. I'm going to choose video reference link. That's just what I happen to call the column. And then as I move through my videos, I switch and show the correct video. OK, who likes to write really long form content, either in pages or in news articles? I happen to be one of those people. Richie happens to be one of those people. Nobody else? Super short articles only? 
Yeah, Omar, there we go. Omar likes to write really long form content. So one of the things that we've realized with longer form content is it's awkward to jump people to the right spot deeper in your content. So what we've done is we've added what we call deep linking or anchor tags, following industry standards, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on a page. So we're gonna come back to our home page, and in our news web part here, I've got a long article I copied because I often watch and read our accessibility articles from Microsoft. It's one of the things I'm very proud about. Uh, and this just has a myriad of great content in it. What we've done for you as a page author is you don't have to add a special anchor place in your document. We automatically convert every H1, 2, or 3 into a linkable source. So here is the pages in view mode. So you've either saved it or you've published it. I'm hovering over this link, and I can click the link. We add that to your address bar, which I guess I will get out of full screen mode so that you can see my address bar. So as I click this link, we add it as a pound anchor at the end of your page. If I were to grab that link, open up a new browser, paste directly that link, either through sharing it via email or here or in a link in my navigation, you see I've jumped directly to that place on my page. Excellent. OK. With that, I am going to help and ask for some feedback. Because our team that built that deep linking, the next thing once we have deep linking that you want to do is figure out how do I roll up those links in a beautiful, simple way so that I can have an easy to make TOC at the top of my page. So you could easily add each of those links manually in the RTE, but they've also built a little prototype to automatically add the TOC and they'd love your feedback. So I'm gonna put this QR code and this short link survey up first. So you can take a picture of this slide Richie, our PM for the anchor feature out of China, as well as our table of contents feature, really wants your feedback. How do you want this to work? And then after you've grabbed this link, I'll show you an example of the prototype uh, that we built, but we're also thinking of other ways we could include it maybe directly in the page or into the rich text editor. So I'll switch over to a different browser here. This is essentially the same article. Uh, it happens to be on a different site because this is just a prototype and we try not to put that out very far in our rings of deployment. So I deep link to a particular link on the page. If I scroll back up to the top, however, we've added, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. So uh, this is a copy of that page I brought over to another site which we use in our dog fooding environment. And it's this basically the same content. I did change the title image. But so you can see that we have deep linking on all of these, because again, H1s, 2s, and 3s are automatic. But at the top, we've added this widget off to the right, which in view mode gives you deep links, gives you all of the H1, 2s, and 3s. And you can edit it and have some limited choice there. But internally, we're really debating if this is the right solution, so we want to hear from you. Again, just a prototype right now. The idea could be that this is a thing that we add into our rich text editor, maybe into our menu bar or over here, or maybe it's something on the page bar. We want to hear from you. The prototype does work, of course, and our anchor links, because we're following industry standards, easy to use and roll up, but we want to hear from you what's the right solution that you'd like to see. Okay. With that said, I'm gonna switch over for one second and then we are gonna talk about some of the enhancements that we made to our SharePoint News product. So you likely saw these sli slides earlier if you saw Nicole's great talk on transforming your intranet with Deb, Johnny, and Dave on Tuesday. News is a very powerful system for distribution. It leverages all of the goodness I've shown you here in modern pages as well as the web parts that build the building blocks of those modern pages. And then it creates distribution for your customers across a myriad of endpoints, right? Mobile in the SharePoint start page, likely rolled up to your intranet homepage, your new home site. Uh, and it helps you make beautiful content that customers can engage with. 
Some of the changes that we've made or enhancements we've added to news, even though uh, Nicole did a great demo of them on Tuesday, I've gotten asked by a bunch of uh, folks in the last couple of days. So my thought is we had so much rich, dense information there, maybe you missed a couple of the highlights. So I'm gonna re-show a few of them and give you a hint at a couple of new ones as well. Okay, if we come back to our homepage that we were working with earlier, you see that we have what looks like a hero web part right here. This is actually the news web part. We've brought over the tiles layout from our hero web part as we like to reuse and make our experiences consistent. We got a lot of feedback that people liked the layout in the hero, but they wanted to drive it dynamically from news. So we brought that layout over to news as well as in that layout, you can choose, just like you can in Hero, the number of displayed, sorry, clap away, my bad. <laughs> you can choose to display the number of tiles that you'd like, as well as one of the other features that Nicole showed off that we've recently launched in March is the idea of being able to organize and pick which news article goes to which specific slot. So if we said that we really, again, want to highlight this particular talk, I could move it to any prescriptive spot. You see that this line shows me in my current layout, my tiles layout, I can only show five articles. So if I were to move something below that line, I'd get a warning that says, no problem, we'll respect where you've placed it, but in your current layout, you won't see it. So I'm gonna move that back up to where we will see it, and then as I close that out, you'll see that article is exactly where I expected it to be. If I were to drop this down to two tiles, you'd see I've permanently placed this article, not permanently, until I change it, and then news will dynamically shift through on this other tile as I want. So this is a very common scenario for that intelligent intranet homepage where your comms team wants to highlight a particular piece of content, maybe for the day, or maybe to co-launch or co-locate with a particular event that they have. And in the future, as you heard from that same talk, and I think DC mentioned it, we are working because as you saw on the user voice, one of your top requested features is scheduling. So we are working on scheduling. We'll have a roadmap slide at the later, but right now this is what we've got today, but we're working on scheduling in the future. Now the next interesting feature that we've added to news, if I roll down to this other news web part, you know what? I'm just gonna use this news web part. Uh, we're gonna switch the layout of this web part and I'm actually going to, you know what? I'm gonna jump to a different site. That's what I wanna do. I'm gonna jump over to our corporate news site. So on this corporate, uh, on our home site that you saw on Tuesday, we have news that is our organizational news. So at the company here at Contoso, we have converted certain, or we haven't converted, we've promoted certain sites as being authoritative. They are the source that every employee should see content from and should recognize that this is authoritative organization news. We give it this special visual styling so I could jump to this particular article, or in this case, I'm gonna to jump to the news portal that we have here at Contoso. I'm gonna edit that page and scroll down to this next web part that Nicole has wonderfully configured to show off one of our other new features, which is filtering. So today in news, in your environment, if you're set to this site, you have an option to filter news. And you can see that that option shows up here. In production today in your tenant, if you choose a different data source, not this site, we hide that option. But we're working on, and what we're showing right here, is filtering works across sites and will come out to you shortly. So here I've got selected sites. We've selected three sites to roll content up on. At the moment, I'm showing recently added from last month. But let's make that a little bit different. Let's go ahead and just make this very marketing focused. So if I say marketing, titles include these words, and I hit apply, you're gonna see that my link reduced down to only content that comes in that includes the word marketing, and you see it still rolls up from all of these other sites. News filtering across sites. 
OK. The next demo I want to show you is going to bring us back to the idea of that intelligent intranet. Because one of the things that we care quite a bit about is engagement on content. So if I come back to our site from earlier, and we look at, actually, I'll just use this site, because we're on it, and it's great. I'm going to go ahead and discard my changes here. If we want to make sure that users engage with your content, we not only want to have you make beautiful, accessible, and inclusive content available on all devices, we also want to help them stay engaged with that content. And one of the best ways we think we can do that is using machine learning to recommend additional content to you while you're reading content that's interesting. So we've added that to our system, and we call it recommendations. So it's available on the bottom of every modern page or news article. So if I'm reading this article about our new marketing officer, and I scroll past the beautiful page, you'll see right here we have content that you might be interested in. This is powered by machine learning based on a number of factors, but in simplicity, there are people that you work with in the graph, people that have viewed this page before you, what other pages they viewed, and then the number of views on a particular page. And there's basically three things you can do on any of these elements. This is a carousel of up to eight articles that we've recommended. You can either click onto the article, in which case we register that as a good recommendation. You could also say, this is a bad recommendation that I don't like, and you could dismiss this recommendation. That also tells us and helps our machine learning algorithm get better. And then the last one, probably my favorite, is, wow, that's interesting, but I don't have time right now. I'm going to save this for later. And then Save for Later, as you know, works on our SharePoint mobile app, as well as on the SharePoint Start page. And we're working on a web part that you could choose to add to your own page that'll bring my personal items that are saved within SharePoint up to the front. So we made a good recommendation, but I don't have time to read it now. And we'll continue to expand and build on this feature as it gets smarter and you guys use it. One quick thing to cover on that, since I, I'm guessing that there's going to be some questions on, what if I don't want this here on a particular article? Let's say it's an article about something I don't want to have recommendations on. That's no problem. You can also come to the article. At the bottom of the article, you'll get an option to turn off. You'll be interested. So you as the author would turn that off, and viewers of that page would not see that content. Similarly, we have a setting at the site level that for particular sites, if you believe that that site maybe shouldn't be included in recommended items, you could turn it off for a particular site. By default, both of these features will be on for customers because what we've seen in Microsoft since we've had this running the last six months is a 3 to 6% uplift and tick through on the recommendations since we've had this running. And that's a pretty high click-through rate for things that we machine believe are interesting to you. So with that, I think I'm going to bring us back to the where we started and talk through the intelligent intranet. And we're going to bring Rachel out and talk about some roadmap slides. And then we left about 10 minutes after we covered that for questions. So we have a couple of folks with mics that will come around. But let's... Let's come back to that intelligent intranet. At SharePoint and at Microsoft in general, we're trying to build what you need to run your business. So that simple, intelligent, beautiful intranet system powered by SharePoint that helps cut through the noise and bring only the right things to you in a much easier way than maybe we did in the past. With that, Let's talk about our roadmap. Rachel, you want to come out and walk us through that? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, John. So on the available soon side, our first one is page templates, which y'all should already have on your machines this week. I also want to call your attention to Undo Redo, Content Handler, and some of the new web parts that y'all saw in the demo today. Those are things that we already have working in code, so they should be coming out really soon. Later this year, we have multilingual, which I know a lot of people are really excited about. DC gave a great talk on it earlier this week. And for top of mind, we're really focusing, like John mentioned, on addressing some of our user voice feedback. So if y'all haven't checked out uservoice.com yet, I highly suggest you go. You can leave us feedback on what features you want to see and upvote features 
from other people. So here's our action plan for the future. Um, with envisioning, we want to use the SharePoint lookbook, plan for how content will be modernized, and build to start the internet transformation. So I really want to thank y'all for coming out this morning. And I know we covered a lot of new content, so we want to open the floor up for questions. Oh, and here's some resources. Thanks. Okay. What do we have for questions? Can Richie or Andy with the mics, can you get a mic for him? When you're saving pages as templates, does that go to the tenant or the specific site collection? It goes specifically to the site. Is there going to be a way to change the classic sites to modern sites, like a flip of a switch? So there are a couple of solutions to look at migrating content today, one built by our great support team that uses uh, the PMP provisioning engine, where you essentially look at a particular page, and you map the components on that page, and then you map those to modern components, and you pull that down and transform those into modern pages. Uh, in general, we think the right way to look at a classic site and a modern site is to analyze which of that content should be modernized, what should it look like? Does it need to have the exact same structure? Is that content still fresh and relevant? This is a great time to look at, and as Rachel showed, get inspired by the lookbook and think about how that content should look and then move over the most interesting content while living again with some of that classic content. But the longer answer, I guess, would be we're always listening and looking for a solution that might work, but right now as we look at it, we think that right solution is analyze and find the right pieces of content to move. Other questions? We've got one up front, Andy. Hello. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've had a repeating request across our modern pages where users want interactive graphics and it's forced me to put out the dreaded SPFX script editor web part. The but, dreaded? <laughs> well, because a lot of, you know, you can do a lot of things in there to mess things up, so. But sure. um, has there been any thought to a type of web part that would, you know, work for that request? Some type of interactive graphic where I select graphics and you can roll over them and pop up information. That, that's basically the re request I've been getting over and over. And just to make sure I'm hearing you right, you're essentially asking about image maps, so you'd have, Five right. or six yes. links? Yes. Okay. So today, yes, that was a user voice request I just responded to. At the moment, we don't have that as an element that we would build in our backlog. We do have uh, great solutions that Rachel demoed earlier about adding simple links to beautiful images and even call to action buttons, so some simple versions of that. Uh, and there are a couple of partners that make image map web parts, not dreaded. Uh, or obviously you could look into the open source solutions, but at the moment that's not something that we have in our backlog, but if it's super important and you believe that a lot of people are going to need that, uh, we absolutely could do that. One of the reasons we didn't initially is they don't work so fabulously in a responsive and different sized layouts. So in the classic sense of an image map, you would have a big image map and it would have like 12 links on it, and then when you'd get smaller, it would just sort of slide off the screen. And that's not what we want in our inclusive intranet. Yeah. So one, one feedback I always get uh, within the company is that they would like to use uh, inline images within the text web part, just like in Word. So do you see that happening? Rachel, do you want to take that one? Um, sure. So that's feedback that we've gotten a lot, and it's definitely something we're considering. Right now it's not in our plans, but we are looking into ways for you to uh, edit your images so they fit better on your page. Yes. Yes, um, thank you. Question on the, well, I had actually the same question. Can, can you the put the mic of, up higher? I can't yeah, the idea of copy pasting from Word into a page with an image. So I guess the answer is no. But can you, are you guys considering uploading a Word document in, into a page to convert that Word document? Sure. Uh, so two things there. One, absolutely paste from Word should work and should be beautiful. It should include images. I shouldn't say should, it does include images. What we do do is if you were to grab a Word document, so image text, image text, image text, 
you control A, control C, paste that into a modern page. We'll split that into the sections. So you'll have text, it will retain your formatting, we'll add and upload the image for you, next text, etc. Now Word being a single canvas, we don't try and do multi-canvas on that paste, but so you'd likely need to rearrange some of that content if you wanted to take advantage of our multi-column canvas in pages. To your second question, we actually had a great fix hack learn effort uh, that a number of developers worked on and inspired me to, to help them with that did exactly that. Using the word transformation service that allows you to transform word documents into sways, we actually enabled that service, uh, again, in a hackathon, right, so not quite production ready, into transforming that, that word content into a modern page. We have that in our list of transformative, if you'll excuse the use of the word twice, uh, in our backlog, but it isn't something we're immediately funding. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Yes. Uh, how does the vertical column behave in the mobile view? Sorry, I couldn't quite hear it. The vertical columns that you developed, how it behaves in a mobile view, because then you have... Oh, great question. Yeah, I was thinking that Brad had showed that, and we showed it earlier on Tuesday. So the question is, how does the vertical column behave as you go down to an iPad or to a mobile phone? So we take the center content, we consider that the most important content, and we drop the vertical column to the bottom of that content at the first element, right? So if your page is, uh, I'll put down the water bottle, your page is this wide and this is the vertical column, you go down to an iPad width, that vertical column shifts down following our same responsive pattern on other elements, and then as you get smaller and smaller, we drop those columns down to make a single threaded column ultimately on mobile. Four quick questions. Four um, questions, all yes. right. On embed, you just showed that you had some, as you were typing, you had some fields. Um, is that something that's in production so that you could add some additional um, parameters inside of embed? Because right now, it's not accepting that. Second is when will well, deep leaking... Hold oh, on. Let's okay. go with the first one first. So okay. in the embed web part, I could add additional fields, and is that in production? Yes. So what I showed you is in production for dynamic data. Once you create, you have to use the ellipses in the upper corner and say connect to a data source. Depending upon that data source, our framework does the work to map that data source. That's fantastic. So, yeah, that's in production today. Uh, is, um, are the deep links accepted inside the um, mega menu navigation? Because right now it throws away anything yep. that is after. Um, and with that is there a control so we can say open a new tab or same tab yet? Uh, two different questions. I'll answer the first one first. So uh, right now we're working through making deep linking production ready in all of our components. Uh, and we do have some bugs that we're working out right now. Uh, when we ship that feature to you, absolutely it will work in navigation and quick links and hero. It will work everywhere because that's where you want to link from. Yay. So the... <laughs> uh, the second one would be control over open in new tab and open in same tab. We do support that kind of control in the rich text editor. So if you were to use the link button in the rich text editor or control or command K if you were a Mac user, we open that up and we did give you the option. In general, we've gotten quite a bit of feedback as you saw from our user voice slide, I think a thousand plus votes, that we should not do the open in new tab by default. Um, we went back from opening new tab by default and in classic giving you ultimate control over everything to more of a consistent experience. That's where we're landed right now. If you think that we need more control in the nav provider, I would absolutely love to see a user voice uh, suggestion, either upvoted or a new one created that says, we really need this because we're trying to simplify it and keep it consistent. But if it's not what you need, please tell us. Because the top feedback that we get from our user communities is it's not consistent. So if they're opening a tab, that's, sorry, they're opening a link that's going to go somewhere that's on another SharePoint site, uh, because it's in the same tenancy, SharePoint doesn't know it's a different place. And so it opens it in the same tab. That's actually by design. That is part of our new consistent experience. And we get pounded on it. <laughs> Because okay, of it being why, don't, a problem. why don't you come to the booth later? I'm going to uh, go to the booth right after this, and I'd be happy to talk about it in more detail. I really want to understand it, because in the past, we were very inconsistent, and while we still have a little bit of inconsistency we need to stomp out, that is directly in our new pattern, because we can save quite a bit of time for you and load everything faster if we keep that Chrome consistent and follow W3C standard, which is links open same page. 
Great. Okay. Yeah. I have a question about images and news stories. So we often have an image that we would want to put at the top of a news story, uh, and then we have another picture that would go within the context of the story. The way it works now, that wide horizontal yep. image becomes your, uh, yep. since it's first, becomes your thumbnail. Yep, absolutely. And so we're interested in the ability to be able to pick that image that is the thumbnail because that's not always the best image for a thumbnail. That's so funny. That's one of the demos I cut. Do you want to show them a demo of changing thumbnail and picking your own? Yeah, sounds good. Um, uh, five. Cool. So if you go, I think, yeah, this is a news page, and you go to page details, um, the thumbnail will pop up in the corner here, and you can click change thumbnail, and you could choose any image. I'll just choose one from recent, but you can also use all of these sources. And that should be your new thumbnail for your page. <laughs> and that's available in production today. Yes? This is back to um, the classic site. We had the calendar that showed like the whole month. And now that you guys have moved to the modern, I don't see that anymore. Yep. Can we bring it back? <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you recall my user voice slides earlier, there was a section where I had a little red asterisk that said not in our plans right now. It is about the modern, uh, modernizing that classic calendar experience. Um, we'd love to hear from you on it. I, let's, I'll, just, I'll be blunt with you uh, as part of our SharePoint community here. SharePoint built some great calendaring before Exchange was the world's best calendaring system. And so we kind of kept that calendaring going along, but really, Exchange is the world's best calendaring system. So while we have this modern calendar, or I mean, sorry, where we have this classic calendar that works on lists and rolls up a bunch of content in, in, uh, into a view that's uh, a little older than you might want, um, but has a bunch of uh, filtering, et cetera, on these uh, classic uh, events lists, we think the right solution long term is that Exchange is the place that calendaring happens. So right now in modern, we have two experiences. We have the group calendar, and we have the events list, which we bring in, but we don't try and make it look like a calendar, right? We have beautiful card views that'll get a little bit more beautiful. We'll pull the image up forward to the top of the events cards. Um, but that calendar view is likely not a place we're gonna invest in the short term. Again, give us feedback. That's the wrong call. We wanna hear from you. But us trying to compete with the world's best calendaring system in SharePoint using lists is likely not a place that we're going to invest. <laughs> Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, for home sites, do home sites have the ability to aggregate content from across the organization, specifically with news, even from things like private teams? Um, it seems like from when you've demoed the web parts that it's often this site or these specific sites, but we're kind of looking to see could the home site be that place where the user gets a one-stop shop to get news from mm -hmm. across all the SharePoint sites. Yeah, there's a couple of ways that you could do that. So in the sources, you have this site recommended for current users, which is our personalized news feed. Uh, then you also have select sites. If the site that you're on is either a hub or a member of a hub, you'll have a new dynamic option added, which will be all sites in this hub. So you could either say, roll up news from all sites. You could add an element, which is what we're doing out of the box on home sites, which is adding the personalized news feed, which leverages the Microsoft graph to look at who you work with and who's posting news that we think you'll be interested in in their management chain, as well as the sites that you follow to inform that personalized news feed. Then we take that organization news that your comms team has said these sites are important, and we push that into that personalized feed. So powered by the graph and with the comms team. So that's what we're going to give you out of the box. Now, you can configure that part, as you mentioned, to say all sites, some sites, these sites in this hub. You have quite a bit of capability there. If, however, it's not meeting your needs, please tell us, because we think we've given quite a bit of flexibility. But if it's too much flexibility or not enough, we'd love to know which dimension to go. And with that, I think this is probably the last question, because we're 30 seconds till done. All right, uh, so we have about 200 to 300 news articles go through our news hub in a month. Um, okay. The biggest complaint we have by creators has to do with images uh, because about two-thirds of our population of users are on mobile. 
Um, so they create all of those news articles with beautiful imagery. As long as you see it on a desktop or a laptop, it looks great. But because there's just the one focus dot, it always cuts off people's heads and hmm. very difficult to use. It doesn't resize. Is okay. there any potential to use similar to what you've done in Sway, where you've got multiple focus rings so that you're able to set the extents of what's important in the image so that we can get away from that? Yeah, that's a issue. good suggestion. I actually haven't heard someone, since we introduced focal point, I haven't heard that feedback uh, other than the feedback of the earlier ask, the, the earlier question, which is, I love this picture, but I really want a 16 by nine thumbnail picture. So that's why we added the change the thumbnail, because we imagined that while we'll automatically pick what we think is the right thumbnail, typically the top web part on the page that uh, says it supplies a thumbnail, um, you could select this alternate thumbnail that's gonna look great in those roll-ups. What I'm hearing from you is maybe some additional control in the title region, which Richie's ears are burning and listening on as he drives that area for us, uh, as to multiple focal points. So that's great feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, yes, with that, thank you very much. Thank you.